Ryan texted me yesterday after the breakfast, men's breakfast yesterday morning. He says, I'm sick. And Michelle's going to be sick too. Because <laughs> we've been in the same spot for too many days, okay? So he said, what do you want me to do? And I said, what do you want to do? And he says, well, I'm going to try and do a video and project a video, okay? And so you could have got Ryan on the big screen. And then he called me back and he says, I don't think I'm going to do that. So he asked me if I could fill in. So this is a message that uh, I've had on my heart for a while. So hopefully we can share it with you and you will enjoy it, okay? Let's pray. Dear Heavenly Father, Calm my heart, calm my spirit, and help me to share your words with your people. Thank you for the privilege of being here together today, of being a family who loves you. In Christ's name, amen. Christmas is my favorite time of year. Anybody else there? I like the lights. I don't really care about the presents anymore. I'm too big a kid to do that now. But I like the lights. Uh, did you all have an opportunity to see the, the light show out here in the yard this, this winter? Um, my grandchildren got tired of looking at the light show because every time after our kids' club on Wednesday night, I'd pull the truck over by the Ford garage and we'd sit there and watch the lights go through. And the one time it was 45 minutes. And they were all getting fidgety. And after that, we only did part of the show every time, okay? But we watched it every week, all right? When our kids were little, we would actually get in the car and drive around town and look at all the lights in everybody's house. At that time, Ilian was all decorated, and uh, the housing development over here uh, south by, by uh, Southridge was all decorated. And it was really fun. I enjoyed the colors and the brightness, but I enjoyed the contrast with the light and the dark, okay? The dark of night lit up by the lights, okay? Because those lights just did something to my spirit within me. Jesus said, I am come a light into the world, and whoever believeth on me should not abide in darkness. Lights are shining everywhere. Did you notice that? It's not just Christmas time. It's the street lights. It's the lights in the homes. If you drive through uh, town at night, you see the lights in the, the windows. And the last few nights, you even got to see the lights in the sky called stars. Any of you watch those? We even had pictures on our phone of the Oriola of How's that go? The Northern Lights, okay? Let's do it that way, okay? Oriella Borellis. I'm, I'm lost now. Anyway, Northern Lights. That were even in Northern Iowa, you could see them, okay? So once in a while, you ever had a family dinner where you had a candlelight dinner at home? Anybody do that at their house? Nobody does that. Oh, some people do. Okay. After a while, we eat by candlelight, and then we turn the lights on because we can't see what we're eating. But it's romantic in the first spot, okay? So lights, we light candles in our homes for different reasons. Uh, sometimes it's cozy, sometimes it's just a little different uh, decoration to it. But you ever notice that a candle burns very silently? God came into the world very silently. Not into a royal palace as a king with fanfare and, a, and royal robes and, and exquisite things. He came in very quietly. Because there was no room in the inn at all, he got to go to a stable. And Jesus, our Lord, was born in a stable. Now, if you have a nativity scene, what is in your nativity scene? You have a nativity scene, you have Jesus, and you have Mary and Joseph, and sometimes you have animals, and sometimes you have shepherds, and sometimes you have wise men. But when Jesus was born, only his parents were there doesn't even say there were any animals in the, in the inn. Jesus kept to the background for 30 years. For 30 years, being the son of God and living in this world, he stayed in the background. Luke 3 says he started his ministry around 30 years of age. It was quiet around him, and he learned in silence, and he grew up in silence. Evangelist Matthew says, uh, quoting Isaiah, he shall not strive nor cry, neither shall any man hear his voice in the streets. And this is mainly applying to Jerusalem. Jesus Christ appeared and acted humbly and meek with no political aspirations at all. His demeanor was that of a lamb and not a lion. He was no rabble rouser. He didn't do political riots, political protests. He didn't burn stores and turn over cars and attack police. 
He wasn't shouting his message out on the streets. Jesus did not grasp power by force, and he frequently withdrew to a solitary, lonely place to pray. He didn't want to be made king. He entered, he entered synagogues, and he spoke there to the priest, and his parents even found him at the age of 12 in the synagogue talking to the priest and talking to the Sadducees and Pharisees, and they marveled at his wisdom. He preached by the sea and in the fields of Galilee. He spoke individually to his disciples or to specific groups of small people. That's how it is to this day where much in this world screams and blares and calls out and says, look at me, how important, how wonderful I am. God's love penetrates our hearts calmly and serenely. There's a prophetic example from the Old Testament where there's a, where there's a prophet that is in a cave. And God says, go stand out in the front of the cave and I'm going to walk by. And there's a great huge wind that blew tore the mountains apart. Can you imagine tearing mountains apart? Tornadoes do that to things we build. And it broke the pieces of rocks, but the Lord was not in the wind. And then there was an earthquake. You ever been in an earthquake? We've been through a couple small ones. They're kind of creepy. But the Lord was not in the earthquake. And after that, a fire, but the Lord was not in the fire. And after that, a still, small voice. And when Elijah heard it, he wrapped up his face and his mantle and went out and stood at the entrance to the cave. And God says, what are you doing here, Elijah? For the Lord wasn't in the wind, wasn't in the earthquake, wasn't in the fire, but a still, small, gentle breeze of love and gentleness. We don't have to shout in our lives. We can shine softly as candles for the Lord in our lives without drawing attention to ourselves. If you look at the candle up front up here, that's a real candle burning. The flame is small. I had a torch I was going to use that shot long flame, but the candle's much safer inside, okay? If we shut the lights off, there'd be kind of a glow up front, right? So a candle can illuminate the darkness of the world. Jesus was born in the night as a small human child and placed in a manger. It is he who illuminated the darkness of the world around him, and he's still illuminating countless hearts today. Jesus says, heaven and earth will pass away, but my words will never pass away. And First Peter says, the word of the Lord endures forever. No one else has ever achieved what his words have done. They are still as relevant today as they were when they were spoken 2,000 years ago. He is a person who still gives light, and he gives life, and he gives it forever. Everyone who calls upon him can be illuminated because Jesus says, I am the light of the world. He that follows me shall not walk in darkness, but shall have the light of life. There are candles of every size. Every one of us here is different. Large ones, small ones, little bitty tea light candles, and depending on the purpose, they're used for different things. But it doesn't matter which kind of candle you are and that you shine only in the place that God has placed you. God will not ask how big of candle you are, but whether you've shown. Are we letting our light shine? As we go through our lives, do others see Christ through the light of our lives because his light is shining through us? candle's flame is flickering. How many of our lives flicker back and forth? We talked about that in Sunday school. That sometimes we're not exactly always exactly what we should be. God mo brings movement into our lives, and the Holy Spirit is not motionless. Remember when you first met Jesus Christ as your Savior? How you felt changed in your spirit? How you were new? Some people would say, I breathe different because the weight of my sin was gone. The Holy Spirit leads us, he applies brakes, he drives us, he grants burdens to us, and he grants spiritual visions to us. 
The Lord is always good for a surprise. He's never boring, right? Look at how he created each of us sitting here today. And we talked about the animals in Sunday school. And I marvel at the plants, little crocuses that are pushing up through the soil right now to bloom. When you read the Gospels, you'll find the disciples could scarcely keep up with him. And they were constantly amazed. Something new was always going on. There were surprises. And he was always someplace different. His words turned everything on its head. Jesus comforted people. And then he rebuffed people. He established and he tore down traditions. He encouraged and he disappointed. He drew in and he cast out. When the disciples wanted to stay, he moved on ahead. When they didn't even want to enter, he remained right there. The disciples were with him for three years, and they were in that boat, and he was sleeping in the stern, and the storm was raging, and going to capsize the boat, and they woke him up, and he said, be still. And they said, what kind of man is this who even the winds and the waters obey him? And the people ask, who is he? For he forgives sins. Do you allow yourself to be moved by the Holy Spirit of God? Maybe you've just accepted Christ as your Savior, or maybe you've walked with Jesus for 50 years. Do we allow those uncomfortable moments in our life to be illuminated by the Spirit of God in our souls? There are many times when I sit and stand in awe of just how God has moved situations as I look back on His provision, His protection, and His providence in my life. Sometime I've missed where He wanted me to go because the Lord was moving, but I was dragging my heels. So then I need to ask forgiveness for missing where He wanted me to be. When Jesus wanted to return to Judea, the disciples interjected, Master, the Jews sought to stone you there, and you want to go back? But Paul and his companions later wanted to go to Asia, and the Spirit prevented them and urged them to travel to Macedonia instead. Life is an adventure with Jesus Christ. Are you letting yourselves be moved and carried about? A candle sacrifices itself. The one in front is real. If you burn it long enough, it'll kind of shrink down. I told Connie I wanted one that melted fast. We didn't have one. When I was a teenager, we would go to coffee houses, okay? That dates me because I'm back in the 60s, okay? And we would sit around tables and we would pray war protest songs from Vietnam and we would sing songs and we would have a beer bottle sitting in the middle of the, can in the table and a candle in the beer bottle that melted down to different kinds of wax over the beer bottle. We weren't allowed as Mennonites to drink the beer, but we always took the candles home with us, okay? A candle sacrifices itself. My parents never understood why I brought the candles home, all melted down, okay? A candle gives light because it's self-sacrificing. It burns to give itself away. Jesus came as the light of the world. He sacrificed his entire life up to and including the cross of Calvary so that we could have eternal life. We see in Jesus' descent into humanity a sevenfold process in Philippians 2, 6 through 8. Number one, who being in the form of God, thought it not robbery to be equal with God. Number two, he made himself of no reputation. He was alienated and empty from God's throne to a manger. Number three, he took upon the form of a servant. Number four, he was made in the likeness of men. God wanted to be human. And being found in fashion as a man, number five, he humbled himself and he bowed to authority and he took on all the hardships although he was Almighty God. Number six, he became obedient unto death. His whole life was leading to the way of death. And number seven, he died on the cross. Have you dedicated your life and your body and all you possess to the point of sacrifice for the Lord Jesus Christ? A flame pours upward. Jesus says that he has seen me and he has seen the Father. Jesus brought the light of God to us, and he glorified the Father and centered the world on God. And it's still centered on God because we today are in 2023, the year of our Lord. 
He steers our hearts upward now into the resurrection, and we will be brought upward. German theologian Hans Joachim Erikson writes this, We are still on the way to him and have not yet arrived at our destination, but Christ himself has long since reached out to us. So at his side, we can set out with him toward the great goal of final heavenly communion with him. A flame gives warmth, and it does us good. It helps to relax. Warm-hearted people are comforting. Do you ever notice that? Some people you meet and you just like, okay, even if you don't know them. Why did Jesus attract so many people? It wasn't just the miracles. It was his welcoming warmth. He radiated warmth like no one else. The scribes and the Pharisees were cold. They were frightening, and they kept their distance. <coughs> With Jesus, it was the other way around. And that's how we should be also. <coughs> we should transmit warmth the same way it radiates from a candle. Let your gracious, graciousness be known to everyone. The Lord is near. A candle has a wick at the center. It burns to produce a flame. And it's a beautiful illustration of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit desires to burn within each of us. Jesus was a man full of the Holy Spirit. The apostles were filled with the Holy Spirit. They were all filled with the Holy Ghost, as we said in Acts 2. And Paul tells us that we are to be filled with the Holy Spirit, and we are told not to quench the Spirit. But all the candles in the world can't illuminate a darkened heart. Let there be light, and be a light yourself. You are someone who points the way to someone else. You radiate spiritual warmth in your lives because you burn brightly for Jesus Christ and his gospel. You are someone whose testimony is silent but clear. When you blow out a candle, the wick still glows a little bit. And this is where the Lord intervenes. He says of himself, a bruised reed he shall not break, and smoking flax he shall not quench, till he send forth judgment unto victory. The Apostle Paul writes, For God, who commanded the light to shine out of the darkness, has shined in our hearts to give the light of the knowledge of the glory of God in the face of Jesus Christ. The divine power which created this world and said, Let there be light at the beginning of creation is also the divine power that lives within your life when you accept Jesus Christ as your Lord and Savior. Our darkened hearts were illuminated by rebirth when we came to him and confessed our sins, and we accepted his sacrifice on the cross for our lives. For we were sometime darkness, but now you are light in the Lord, so we need to walk as children of light. God created the sun to illuminate the earth, and allows creation to flourish. And the Lord created us to be light so that we would shine as children of light. So Matthew says, let your light so shine before men that they may see your good works and glorify your Father, which is in heaven. Our transformation and good works point upward. And this is a message of a candle. Christ burns silently. His flame is small. Candles flame are constantly flickering. The candle sacrifices itself. The flame points upward. The flame gives warmth. The candle has a wicked at center, but the candle cannot illuminate a darkened heart. So if you are here today and have never invited Jesus Christ to be your Savior, confessing your sins and receiving his forgiveness, now is the time to do that. You are not here by mistake. You are here because of God's design. His Holy Spirit will enlighten you Enlighten your spirit, renew you, and make you a child of God. The darkness that plagues our lives is sin, and it can be washed away in the soul-cleansing light of Jesus Christ. Let's pray.